right, I'm going to let Max kind of step aside and bring in John Tompkins, our legal analyst. Let Max cut, cut his, cut, catch his breath, but at the same time, he's got some more follow-up to do with that. John, so you have heard uh, the verdict. We saw the celebration out here. So tell me what is going on in there right now with uh, Richard Allen's defense team. Uh, do, are they off in a side room having a conversation with his family? Are they advising them of the strategy going forward? As a defense attorney, when your client has been convicted, now what do you do? You do meet with the family right away. You answer all their questions and you outline what the process will be over the next several months. So we've already heard the sentencing date is December 20th. Between now and then, character references and other types of mitigation expert um, I'm sorry, evidence needs to be gathered and the family can help you do that. All right, these are four counts of murder, two felony murder, two murder, 40 to 65 years. One, should we expect these could be concurrent as opposed to consecutive, or you've got two victims, consecutive, uh, and two, what type of mitigators and aggravators does that judge need to look at? Well, I think technically, Mr. Allen will be sentenced on two of the counts, one against each girl. Uh, it is the same act, and the kidnapping, the felony murder, really collapses into the murders. Uh, if you go in keeping with what you see most of the time with two victims, you'll see consecutive sentences, one after the other, so each victim has a separate sentence. Most uh, judges will impose consecutive sentences for multiple victims. And of course, the aggravators would be the age of the girls. The mitigators would be Richard Allen doesn't have a criminal history. That's correct. Those are probably the two key aggravators and mitigators. The next thing you'll look at is mental health and personal history of, of Mr. Allen. Okay. We've got a, we've known all along this is going to head to the appeals court, so it ain't over till it's over to quote Yogi Berra. If this goes to an appeals court, you can't take it to the appeals court just because you don't like. Okay, uh, Epler, get, get the defense team coming over. Okay. That's Andrew Baldwin and Bradley Rosie, the defense team there. That's Rosie in the white shirt putting a, a shirt or a jacket in the back of his vehicle. Uh, the man in the purple is Matt Huffman. He's an Mr. investigator. Baldwin, anything to say? Andrew, anything Mr. you want to tell us? Okay, and the reason for that may be they could quite possibly still be under a gag order. John, I'll ask you to chime in on that as we watch them. Uh, the judge issued a gag order in this case two years ago. Why would that gag order remain in effect now if we've got a guilty verdict? Well, they don't want this to become a, a media circus. They don't mind commentary. But it is always best for both sides to not start trying the case after the verdict in the press. Well, apparently I've just learned that we have a gag order that's going to remain in effect until the sentencing. That would be December 20th. And you can see Andrew Baldwin shooting us a little wave there, <clears throat> who's uh, at one point when I spoke with him and he was very emotional. And he said, you know what, there's still a killer running around out here in this town and it's not my guy. And I think he feels a sense of justice. One, he genuinely believes that Richard Allen is not guilty, but his sense of justice justice for this town is that there is still a killer running around here. Throw a rock in this town and you're going to find just about anybody who's going to have a split decision on that, on whether they think this was a solo act or whether somebody else was involved with it. And John, as we talked about with um, the appeals, of course, you can't get an appeal just because you don't like the verdict. You need some grounds. Are there grounds in this case that's going to take some heavy lifting for somebody to look at for appeal? I think there's, there are numerous uh, rulings, and this is where the Court of Appeals looks at defense motions that were denied. So if a defense motion is granted, there's no appeal issue there. If a defense motion is denied, so multiple uh, rulings from the sketches to keeping Odinism out to not allowing the metallurgist to testify, those will all be reexamined on appeal.